Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's check out this code. What I have done, I've created a variable called with a char type. I'm going to print it out of a screen. I'm going to press enter and the program is going to end. Now watch. I make a variable, I print it to the screen, it just prints out the letter I, I press enter, and the program's over. Well, let's look at what happens here. Now first, when I create a variable here, it's going to take up a certain amount of memory, and how much memory depends on the variable type. But what we have here is this concept called virtual memory. Now a virtual memory is just memory, is just the way that the computer thinks about memory and not the actual physical memory that's really going, the things that's really going on inside the, the RAM. So this is virtual memory and the way the computer thinks about virtual memory is a bunch of little boxes. Each box will take up one byte of memory. Now imagine I'm going to look at these boxes through this view here. I'm looking at them straight on so I can only see right through these boxes here. So I'm going to switch views here. These are the same boxes here. I'm just looking at just many, 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 many different boxes here. And they each represent one byte of memory here. So what happens when I run this program here? When I run this here, don't forget about the invisible constructor function here this constructs a variable so when I construct a variable here in this case char variables take up one byte of memory and there it is I filled this box with memory here so imagine that all these little gray boxes are empty boxes here there's no memory being used well now this this box uh, that's orange is now taking up memory here now when I terminate my program here, the destructor function is called, oops, and then it destroys this variable. So when the program is over, your variable is free. Okay, now what ha watch this here. What happens if I make a bunch of variables here, and I get somewhere in my program and I decide to close it? Well, it didn't uh, terminate, did it? Well, don't worry. There is no permanent damage done to your computer. That variable will be destroyed. When, when your program is done running, no matter how so, all your variables will be destroyed, and you will not be losing any memory. Okay? So, uh, for those of you that know about the new and delete operator, if we made a bunch of new variables from the heap, um, don't worry. Those are destroyed. If you have no idea what I said, that's okay. You shouldn't right now if you're watched uh, all these videos in order. But for those of you that do have extra experience, there will be no permanent damage done to your machine at all when you make a bunch of new variables that you forgot to delete or didn't delete them somehow. Don't worry, those will be destroyed when your um, program is done running. So you do not have to worry about your uh, computer's life ending. So I just want to clarify that. So I make a variable and it's destroyed by the destructor when I terminate it through that way. Okay, but uh, that's not all that I wanted to show you though. What I wanted to show you that each one of these boxes here has a label on it and that label is a memory address here. Now each memory address is unique. No two boxes have the same memory address. Okay. Well, what I want to do, I want to print out the memory address, oops, the memory address of the my char variable here. Now, notice here that I have to put an ampersand, and then I type the variable after the ampersand. So the ampersand comes first, and the variable name comes next here. When I press play, I want to start debugging, I get this thing here. What is this? Well, this is the memory address of that particular variable here. And it's a bunch of crazy characters. Okay? Let me play it again. This time it looks a little bit different. I mean, it's pretty much the same. It starts with the variable name, or the variable value, and then 
a few funky characters and then a few more funky characters. It happens to be different every time. And I think, don't mark my words here, that's why it's called a uh, random access memory because it is at a random spot every time. I think, but you have to read up on that yourself. But the thing, the, the thing is, um, that we are, we're never going to care what the very, the actual memory address is. So this probably might be the only tutorial where I actually do print the memory address to the screen. But I just want you to know, just keep in mind that each variable will have a different memory address somewhere. Okay? Well, let's say I make a, a double type. Okay? All right, and I give it a value, and I run it. Well, it's the same thing. We get a memory address. But what, what's what's the issue with this here? In this case, this one takes up more than one byte of memory. This variable here will take up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one here takes up eight bytes of memory here. So, well, if it takes up eight bytes of memory. Shouldn't it print off eight different addresses here? Because each each box has a different memory address, right? Well, the memory address is always going to be the first box that it takes up. That's it. No other variable will fill up these used boxes here, but these boxes are being used. But we're only going to the computer is only going to know what variable we're talking about when we refer to the first memory address here. And that's what we have on memory addresses here. What's the so that's the uh, visual concept that we need to know that the we have virtual memory. Virtual memory is kind kind of a it's a fake memory. It's not really fake, but it's like a cover story for the computer to understand what the memory is. Then the cover story is a bunch of little boxes, and they each have a memory address, and each box represents one byte of memory. That's just the basic understanding that we need to know about memory. You know, I'm not a memory expert, but that's all we need to know to uh, be able to finish the rest of the tutorials on memory here. Now, we'll see how we can use these memory addresses later on in the next couple tutorials. So that's the concept. So we can print off the value just by ignoring the ampersand here. And we get 3.14159. Or, and we can use the ampersand here. And notice that I can keep the ampersand right next to the variable without any spaces here. So there's no white space issue. And we get the memory address still. So the ampersand, when we output, when we use the ampersand symbol, that's how we can use, that's how we can access memory addresses or not. Or just use the value here. So we can access two parts of the, va the variable here. We can access the memory address of that variable and the value here. So right now we know two properties of a variable here. It has a memory address and uh, it has a value here. We also know it takes up certain bytes of memory here, but the main two things I want you to know is that it has a memory address and it has a value. That's it. We'll see how we can use these memory addresses later on. So we're going to learn a new variable type in the next video. And it's the variable type that is going to store memory addresses. Okay, that said, I'm going to wrap this up and we're, let's move on.